everybody, Steve here, and I want to set the record straight with this reply. And here's some background. I watched a video entitled From Monica Dennington, Lane CH, and the Dishonest Guys by Simply Danny Girl. Now, here is my very first comment after watching that video. Word for word. Hmm. The word says to preach the word in season and out of season. When the gospel is preached, the Holy Spirit convicts people of sin. After that, each has a decision to make, either to repent with godly sorrow, confess their sins, believe in Jesus, and follow Him as a new creation, or not. The fact is, many who claim Christ do not follow Him and rely on the sinner's prayer to save them. The best advice I can give is to test everything. Examine yourselves to see if you are in the faith and die daily. And then I lift a little smiley face. <clears throat> now, here is Danny's first reply to me on this video. Buddy, you Calvinist foolishly say God does not give man a right to make a decision. No matter you say this lie when you say things against the sinner's prayer, you make no sense. Just judging proven methods. I asked you about Mark Driscollin, your circle as Christian and Calvinist. I see you have not answered my question. You also have become self-righteous to the point of er ungodly arrogance. Danny. First of all, Let's just look at the first sentence that Danny left. You Calvinist. Um, Danny never sent me a message asking me what I believed and to back it up with scripture. Here he just wrongfully assumes that I'm a Calvinist. Uh, he calls me a fool. Uh, says in God does not give any, saying that I believe that God does not give any man a right to make a decision. But yet in my original comment, I said that after the, the gospel is preached and the Holy Spirit convicts people, here, quote, unquote, after that, each has a decision to make. So in the first sentence, we see, Danny, uh, you're missing the boat on this. Uh, you continue on and you say you lie when you say things against the sinner's prayer. Uh, well, first of all, hmm, I'll address this a little later. Uh, you say that I'm judging proven methods. Well, if you've looked at the statistics of this sinner's prayer, that anywhere from 85 to 90 plus percent of the people who said a, a sinner's prayer at a conference, an event, or a so-called revival, that a year later, the majority of these people cannot be found in fellowship anywhere. And rather, they go back to living the life that they did before. But they just kind of think that they're saved because they said a prayer, and now they continue on sinning over and over and over again. And we read in Revelation that if those who continue in sin, those who continue to lie and commit adultery and murder and all those other things will find themselves uh, outside the gates of heaven. In other words, they'll be going to hell because their sins aren't forgiven, because they continue on sinning. They continue on trampling on the grace of God for an occasion of the flesh. talks about, I'm assuming it's Mark Driscoll, and you, Danny, wrongfully assume that uh, he's in my circle or I'm in his circle. Um, again, if you had gotten with me and asked me that question, uh, you would find out that no, uh, I'm not in his circle. He's not in mine. I follow Jesus Christ in his word. And again, you wrongly uh, label me as a Calvinist. I've plainly shown you where God does give us mankind a right to make a decision. And you say, I see you have not answered my question. Um, well, there's the answer to your question. And again, um, anyway, you say you, that I have become self-righteous to the point of ungodly arrogance. Um, I'm not sure how just relating what the Bible says to preach the word in season and out of season, that the Holy Spirit convicts us, 
Now, we have a decision after that to either repent and confess and follow Jesus, or we don't. Jesus said, repent or perish. So I don't understand how that's being ungodly or how that is being arrogant. It is those things that were preached to me, the message, showing that I had offended God. And the Holy Spirit convicted me to get on my knees and to ask for forgiveness, even though I didn't deserve it. <laughs> I didn't deserve it, and God gave me a new life, a new heart. He made me into a new creation, a creation that no longer serves the deeds or the will or the desire of the flesh, but continues on and growing more and more, putting off the old self and being an instrument of righteousness and living that righteous and holy life. And it's only through Jesus Christ that I can do that because there's nothing good in me. The only thing that's good is what Jesus has done to me. And he's given me a new heart. In his words, in his laws, his life is written in me. The Bible says that if you're a believer, that Jesus is in you and you are in him. And there's a marked difference between those who follow him and those that don't. We don't revel in the same sins as the world. Paul, again, over and over says, hey, those that continue in adultery and lying and gossiping and backbiting, these things should not be so. He goes to the point of saying, with an immoral man, don't even eat with such a person. In other words, there is a changed, there is a new person that's supposed to be there. But if you keep on lying and committing adultery and stealing and fornicating and all that stuff... You need to go back to God's Word and examine yourselves. I had to examine myself. I still need to examine myself daily. And I still need to fight the good fight and run the race and grow in glory to glory.